Hey gang, it is Wednesday, September 27th, and as you've seen in my pre previous video, my vlog, you know, I went to visit some family, and now I'm back, so I'm getting some work done on the pony. Uh, this is Brooklyn Pony Part 12, and for those of you following along, you already know what I'm doing with this car. For those of you that are just now finding me, or finding these videos, uh, basically I'm building a 66 Mustang convertible from the ground up. I started with a rusted out shell and a rusted out body I should say. I salvaged pieces from that car and, and uh, actually a 66 coupe as well and I started building that car. So anyway at this point uh, if you want to see those videos just go back and look you'll see the other ones. But this is part 12 and this is going to deal with uh, installing these front frame rails, the aprons and the core support and various pieces and parts. Now, obviously all this is new stuff. This is a new Dynacorn floor pan, firewall, cowl, B-pillars, outer rocker panels, all that stuff. And uh, the floor pan is, I would assume, I should feel comfortable saying assume that, the floor pan was built on a jig. And so everything should be aligned properly based on that assumption. Now, in putting in these frame rails, uh, there's a few things that I have to talk about and deal with and obviously you know having the right angle up and down and side to side is going to be critical uh, some of that will be addressed easily there is um, putting, I'm doing a TCI uh, front all suspension of the car will be TCI but there's the main cross member that will go in for the TCI front suspension now that's going to help me take care of the width and also the floor supports well, they're in a fixed location, so I can't move those, and that's also going to help me with the width. But out here at the end, that can be changed, and I need to address that. Um, along with that, I have to do some adjusting to the um, core support that I talked about earlier in the previous video, because the uh, spacing up and down, where I have written in there 2 and 11 sixteenths, uh, is supposed to fit on the ends of the rails and these are at two and seven eighths and I had another YouTube fan offer a suggestion and basically he had the same problem and his thoughts are and he's I would agree with him is the part that's critical is the height from basically from here to the top or uh, here if you want to get technical but basically that drop needs to be consistent so what he did, and I will probably follow suit, is he cut a line back here on this what would be the front edge if you were looking at the other side and this piece was able to come down slightly and fit this on and worry more about how this fits from this location up than from the bottom. If you reverse that and you cut this well you could be changing your height of this top section. So it just makes sense that uh, we will maintain this and I will cut that and joggle it uh, at, at the minimum. Uh, I may end up actually cutting this square off and fitting everything in place and then re-welding that square back on. So I have yet to get to that point. Um, so anyway, a couple things to think about is simply enough, the frame rails, uh, you know, they're built per whatever stamping they used and there are some variables and what I mean by that is if you would just set this in the pocket and I, I talked about this I think before basically the the floor support is square like I said it's built on jig there's no moving that thing it's staying right where it's at the uh, frame rail has a square bottom to it and I can pull one of these out and show you but basically it it, uh, it fits right in that pocket and if you look at the frame rail or the yeah the frame rail you would think well this is pretty square I should be able to just put this flat portion here on the flat portion there and be confident that it's going to fit well it will however I want to make sure that the height or the angle is correct and by that I mean I could 
tweak this up and down within that pocket. So if this is built a little bit different than the original, there could be some variance there. So that means, you know, this could go up and down just a little in that pocket and that can make all the difference in the world. So, as I talked about in my previous video, or part ten and a half, I believe it was, here's what I did, or what I'm doing. I took a piece of one inch square tubing on this coupe and just using a couple of blocks and a jack, I pressed that piece of one inch square tubing up against the bottom of this original floor support and also the original frame rail. And I had talked about taking measurements. And basically I'm going to do a drop measurement from the bottom of this frame rail down to the top of this uh, piece of one inch square tubing. And my measurement, I'll say, is five and five eighths. I can come back here, find another good spot with no welds blocking me, and the measurement is five and five eighths. So I'm confident and comfortable using that reference. So here's what I'll do. I will take that same piece of one inch square tubing, place it against this floor support, and do the same thing with the jack, and that'll give me the up and down in what I'll say is, you know, a zero reference uh, to the old car. So that'll at least take care of that angle. And then I can do some cross measuring. Um, there's a variety of points that I can measure from, and you know, basically all these pieces are new, um, but I'll have to find a good happy place that I can measure from, say the corner of the uh, firewall there, and crisscross, or from that side, crisscross over here to this, this corner somewhere, and do a measurement, make sure they're the same. And that'll give me a, a crisscross square measurement. So now that'll take care of this height, square this way, and beyond that, I just have to make sure that the cross member fits and the core support fits. Now, I'm not going to, the, probably the only thing that can be adjusted at, at that point, and I'll make sure these frame rails are uh, parallel to each other and where they need to be. However, since I'm installing the aprons and everything, I will mock up most of this. Um, I'll get the frame rails in place, be confident in their width and dimensions and where they're at, and then if need be, I can adjust slightly on the way the aprons fit because basically it's a blank canvas. You know, they just they weld onto that flange, and you know you can you can tweak that. You can easily tweak that uh, apron up and down and make it do what you need. Now, as I said before in my other video, I'm using these Dynacorn one piece assembled or one piece assemble. Uh, or one piece assembly, sorry, um, aprons. This will eliminate any length variance. Um, when it fits up against the firewall, there's nowhere it can go but forward to where they or the core support is. So that takes care of any length variation. And again, I can adjust slightly up and down to make things fit. So hope that makes sense to you. I'm going to get started and try to get these frame rails in today yet. Okay, so I moved the piece of one inch square tubing over to the right side frame rail. And just to give you a reference, that comes in, same thing. Five and five eighths. Five and five eighths. So I'm confident with that. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna tack weld this, uh, this in place. And I'm only gonna tack it to the floor support and I'll probably just do a couple of welds because if, I, if something needs to change I can still change it but I'll probably do it up here at the front so that they don't move but that'll take care that'll allow me to move if I need to in and out just slightly so I'll, I'll just do that tack weld it and then I'll start setting the other rail in place Okay, this may look just a little crude, but I want to show you some things. I have the both rails tacked in. 
Whoops. And like I said before, there's my measurement, five and five eighths, and it's consistent. Um, I did measure between the frame rails on not only what's left of the coupe from there to there, also measured what's left of the front half of the original 66, which has been hasn't been cut or anything. And I also measured on my 68. And basically the width I come up with between the rails is 27 and a half inches. So hold on just one second. By doing this, I come up with and this is where the measurement was on the other car, the coupe. So there's 27 and a half, and that's consistent up to the front. Also 27 and a half. I know I'm upside down here. Um, and the other thing I did was I did a crisscross measurement. And I went from the corner of the rocker up to the corner on both sides of these frame rails and the number is 59 and an eighth so I know it's kind of hard to show you that right now but um, that's the number I've come up with and so everything I feel is square uh, I use this block to keep the width right I use this strap pulling slightly there's not much tension on that pulling just slightly and zeroed numbers 59 and an eighth again in that crisscross pattern so I'm, I'm really confident with where it's at. Uh, I think it looks good. And so I'm going to weld these rails in place. All right, so both frame rails are in. They're fully welded on the inside and the outside of the floor supports as well as at the bottom. And also where it meets the firewall kick up. So with that in place, the frame rails aren't going anywhere and I'm happy with the level. They're within tolerance there and uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. Now the next step in this process will be installing the lower half of the uh, torque box and let me just show you that going to take a little bit of effort to get this in. As we know, you can't really put these in in the one piece. I don't see how you could because you always have to weld this uh, this side of the frame rail if you're going to work on your floor supports or anything like that. But with that, you can bring this up and kind of rotate it and it'll, it'll sort of fit. But where it interacts with this flange, this flange is probably going to need to be trimmed so that it can collapse in there better. Uh, it sticks out a little bit over here where it has to go underneath the rocker panel. So I'll, I will probably trim that flange in some way to get this to come up and allow everything to fit into place. Um, of course I'll clean up this area and treat this and seal it and everything but that's the next step is getting these the, the uh, lower half of the torque boxes in place. And then I believe the next step will be putting in the uh, aprons and the core support. And I mentioned earlier about having some difficulty with those, but that's, that'll be the next step. Now when I do this, the, the, my intent is to have everything mocked into place. So I may have the doors on and have things clamped into place, the fenders hung, and because it's critical that I get those aprons in the right place, and also I know I can't change the core support, but if I need to, I could probably do some tweaking just to make everything right. Um, I want all the alignment to be right. So I'm gonna, that'll be the next phase of this video. Okay, as you can see, I've been mocking up sheet metal. And I've got the aprons set up in place, or at least close to where they need to be. I also have the uh, core support sort of set in place. And there's some details that I want to point out just so you can see what's going on. Um, I'll start with 
uh, the core support. Now, I've talked before or showed before about how the fitment from the core support to the uh, frame rails wasn't working out very well. And let me just show you something that I've done here. This is the ID from here to here of this boxed end of the core support. 1.750. This is a patch rail that you would get in a kit to repair any kind of rust damage on your frame rail. This is 1.740. On the original coupe car, this is also 1.740. So the problem is that the opening or the uh, OD of the frame rail is 2.825. So to remedy the, the situation here, I have a couple of things that I could do. I could take all this apart, spread this box, make it fit. Or I could have cut the flange, like I said earlier, I think I talked about cutting the bottom, spread it out and make it fit. But what I found is the frame rail, I know it's hard to see with everything in place, the upper half is at a slight angle. It's not square. Uh, the dimensions from this this side to the inside, the outside is bigger. So what I did on the passenger side frame rail, I cut a, uh, a slot or a, you know cut a line right here. Basically, I went back about inch and three quarters because that's the drop depth from the uh, inside of this box for the core support. So I cut a line and I broke loose the spot, spot weld and I pressed that down. Now the reason for that is it allowed this actually was sticking up just a little bit and to me it looks like those should be lined up. Uh, so this was up a little bit and you can kind of see maybe inside there the amount of drop. It's not much um, but my thoughts are the frame rail is my basis. The bottom of the frame rail is more of my basis than the top. I can't change Really, I can play with, if I wanted to, the, the height of the core support. But I'm basing it off the bottom of the frame rail because that's based off the bottom of the car as well. Okay, so that's going to remedy the core support situation. Now, with the apron in place, and again, this is that full one-piece apron from Dynacorn, it fits pretty well. If you'll notice, there's a gap between the uh, core support, I mean the apron and the fender. And it's not a lot, but it's enough to take notice of. There's a couple ways I'm going to have to address this. Number one is this flange on the fender, uh, the inner flange, the drop flange, is hitting the inside of the cowl. And to show you an example, you can see that gap coming across the fender. Well, I can't just mash that down, so I'm going to have to trim that fender, and that'll help drop it down. It'll also help address this gap, because I can't go in anymore, because it's hitting the cowl. So that's also going to help address how it aligns to the door. Okay, the other thing is the way this uh, apron fits. Point out here that the where I have the silver marker right there it's basically coming up and hitting the bottom of the cowl so I think it can come up just a little bit by trimming that and the whole reason I think that that's an issue is because of this corner whoops this corner right here you can see I got a, a light gap between the uh, firewall and the cowl this if I try to raise this up to make this go away, it's going to hit the upper half of the cowl, or that upper flange up there. So I, I, I can trim that, and then that's going to allow me to move everything up just slightly. Now, these again, this doesn't fit exactly as it should. You can see there that it, there's still going to be a gap, but a lot of that can be addressed with a little bit of tweaks in these different areas. So, just trying to give an overview of where it's at 
and what I'm attempting to do. Otherwise, looking down the fender, it lines up pretty close to uh, the door. I'm really happy with that. Um, there's just some things that I'm going to have to adjust. And I've been measuring back and forth between the, uh, the coupe and the front half of the original convertible and just doing different location measurements to try to make this make everything fit right. So just thought I'd uh, show you where I'm at at this point. And so I'm going to address these pieces as I can. Thought I'd show you this with the fender off. There you can see where it's been rubbing. And it's kind of a, I don't know why it's shaped like that, but I guess it replicates the original. But it's still kind of weird to have that lump sticking out right there. But you can see where the fender was rubbing and then also making some contact back here. But that's not a big deal. Alright, so I feel like I've made some progress. Um, I've got things lined up better. You can see the, maybe see the gap underneath the uh, from the fender to the apron it's pretty consistent all the way back I did make my cuts up here on the fender as I talked about and so now it is pretty pretty close to right on where it needs to be and the alignment with the door is pretty nice I know none of these things will fit perfect, but this is this is pretty close. Now this gap is a little bit off, and I'll deal with that later. As I've dealt with in other situations like this, if need be, I'll add a little bit of weld to the front edge of the door here, probably just to tighten up that gap a little bit. Um, you know, they don't; these things aren't original tooling. Now, of course, these fenders, these came out of a Dynacorn box, and they're okay. Um, I thought I was doing pretty good with these one-piece aprons, and I still like them. They are they are pretty well made, but I've found another little flaw. Um, the spacing for these brackets here that the fender mounts to. Let me see that. Where am I? Here it is. These are not in the right place, so I'm going to have to move those. Uh, based on the original car. These are meant to be four inches, basically from here to the face, and this one's, I think it's four and a quarter, and this one is four and a half, and the reason that becomes a problem is there's a gap. I don't know if I can show you. You see that gap there? I should not have that gap. I can't change the length of the fender, but I can change the location of that bracket. So whatever reason they didn't, they didn't get that in the right spot and I'll just move it and make it right otherwise things are fitting pretty good and I just realized I, I got a little off on my uh, focus here on this what I was doing because I think the first part of this video was putting in the frame rails and then I was going to put in the uh, lower half of the torque boxes but I got a little distracted I decided to start messing with other pieces um, but this is all part of the same process, so it's coming along. Um, I will more than likely work on the right fender tomorrow and prep everything else for uh, welding. You know, with lots of holes to drill and um, get ready to do my welds. The other thing I want to address somewhat is the shape on the back edge of this apron is a little bit off. Um, for whatever reason this is mangled slightly so I'll have to reshape that and I think that'll clean up this pocket this can go back just a little bit it'll be fine and I think that's about it it's coming along and I hope to have show you more progress in the next segment alright so as you can see I have both front fenders mounted and I also have the front valance panel mounted and I want to point out this is a Dynacorn panel it says it right on it and the fenders uh, the boxes they say Dynacorn on them of course that's a sticker that's been added and um, so I'm sure somebody else makes them 
and the hood of course says Donicorn on it. Now as I was saying earlier about making minor adjustments and tweaks and different things I wanted to point out something on this driver's side fender. Um, when I went to mount the fender I had an issue with the top bolt uh, mount bracket that is welded to the car. In later model cars they actually were a bolt-on bracket so you could adjust them somewhat. These were in a fixed location and there was no adjusting. I'll show you what, it, what I mean. This is the uh, the B pillar for the passenger side or I'm sorry the A pillar for the passenger side out of the coupe and you can see that bracket is welded on and there's no real adjustment. Well when I set the fender on it sat way high. The internal structure of the fender was hitting that bracket and there was no, you could not make it go down any further. You couldn't modify the inside of the fender. So what I did was I um, ground loose or cut the welds loose on the bracket and I lowered it a quarter of an inch and what that did is it got the fender right in plane with the cowl as it should be. I had the same issue, you can see my marks on here, with the fender rubbing on the cowl as I did on the opposite side and so I, I did grind that down to make clearance. Um, I want to point out too that the door even though it's not lining up there's a reason for that and you can't make too many adjustments like this fender can only go in towards the cowl so far you can't there's no other modifications you can do to make that change. The door needs to come outboard and if you look there's a it's really close right here on the A-pillar or the windshield frame and it needs to come out however and I can't really I don't know if I could really show you what I, what needs to be seen here um, and it's not going to work what I did is I, I drew up a diagram of what's happening if you were looking at the door and this is the outer skin of the door so you're basically looking from the back of the car forward on the inside of the door. There's a bracket. Uh, well, the bracket is, it moves around in this support brace. The support brace is welded to the door and it has oblong slots in it. And basically it allows for the bracket to slide around to make adjustments. The way it is, I don't know if this bracket is in the exact right place. Um, What's happening is the bolt, as represented there, the bolt head, is hitting the inside of this slot. So that, in effect, the door can't move any further outboard. So my remedy is going to be probably to grind that oval bigger where it needs to be so that the door can move further out by letting the bolts go that way. hope that makes sense. Um, Otherwise, the door lines up pretty nice on the quarter. And again, the quarter's not fully welded yet. I still have some adjustments up here that I can move it around. Um, but otherwise, the alignment is pretty close. I'm really happy with that. Um, some of this will be addressed as I make adjustments. You know, and the door will come out a little bit. And you can see the, the gap is fairly consistent. I hope you can see that. It's fairly consistent. And that'll get addressed slightly as I make you know, more progress. So, beyond having to move that bracket for the fender, um, there really wasn't much else that I had to adjust. I want to show this. Um, here's my drop measurements coming off the firewall. And it's right at 40 and a sixteenth. Same thing over here. Same location. 40 and a sixteenth. So that's really good. My crisscross measuring, as I was doing before, uh, from I think I used that same bracket for the uh, fender mount, the top bracket. I crisscrossed, and I can't tell you the exact number. It was like 69 and a quarter to the uh, high side or the outside of this hole in the um, core support, and it's dead on.
Another thing I'll point out is it's bubbled right on the money, dead level. I've also taken uh, a long, I have a piece of, a long piece of aluminum up there um, and I stretched it across the fenders at several locations going back, dead level. And uh, the rest of the car is square and level. I'm really happy with it. I know I was torturing myself because I keep looking at this and this side in my mind looks low. And I've measured and measured and measured and it's not low and I think because of my the way I look at things in a symmetrical way this extra material which they've added in for the battery box it, uh, it, it makes that side in my mind feel heavy. I guess that's the term I want to use. Um, but it's not. It's Everything's right on. The uh, valance panel fits the fenders pretty nice. Now it's a gap because it's not the bolts aren't tight. I just wanted to get the shape right um, underneath where the bolts come up. This will this will tighten up whenever I put a nut plate in here and mount that. There's only so much movement you can make on that as well. Um, this one over here is nice. Again, there'll be just a little bit of movement, and I'm happy with that. So, at this point, the plan is to take everything back off, basically. Um, I'm going to pull the fenders off. I'm, I'll, of course, do some more, you know, my own measuring to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to be. But um, I'll pull the aprons out, and I'll prep everything for my plug welds. So that'll mean drilling holes down here. Um, you know to where it's going to meet the flange on the frame rails same thing on this side and once I get those fully set in place um, and it'll be a combination of things getting those in and also resetting the core support back in then I'll fully weld all that and that'll take care of the front end so that's the next step and I'm gonna get started on that So I'm going to start with the driver's side apron. As you can see, I've removed the fender, and I also had removed the apron itself. And there's my whole pattern, about an inch and three quarters. And that'll weld to the firewall, of course. You can see the gap is minimal. It'll tighten up there at the top. Once I get it welded, I can tap that back in. Um, here's the whole pattern on the inside, and that's probably two two and a quarter inches and the same thing in the back and then uh, at the top here I've got just three holes I don't know if you need more than that it's not going to really matter much I'm just trying to make it solid and then three holes on the face and of course I'll everything will get um, weld through primer on it and I'm going to you know like I said I'll weld in this apron first I've also I had put marks where everything lined up um, you see the silver on there and then I put these vice grips clamped them to the cowl and also drew a mark so that the line would line up and other than that that's all I'm gonna do to prep this apron and I'll get it welded in well here's some progress I've got all the welding done on both aprons and blended down. You can see there's the welds to the firewall and that gap went away like I talked about. So everything fits really nice, very happy with it. And I also welded those cut lines that I talked about. I'll blend those down, I just wanted to show you the weld and I also welded the outside where the plug weld was, or the spot weld. And then I prepped the bottom uh, of, of the core support because I'm not gonna weld to the back, uh, to the front. I'm gonna weld through the aprons to the back side of the core support. I just like that better, it's a little cleaner. Um, you can't see those welds so much. And I put four holes at the bottom, two at the top side of that box, two at the front, and two on the side and then of course the prepped holes at the top so those will all interact 
in these areas here. There's that two in the face, four on the bottom. Anyway, so uh, next up is to get the core support in and welded. I'm going to point out another detail. Uh, I did the grinding and have everything prepped on the front of the frame rails. Um, I did want to point out on this passenger side apron, you can probably see some bare metal here. There's actually a weld in there. If you look at this prior, you can look across to the other side of the driver's side apron. It is flat all the way down. And this one, out of the box, is also flat. The difference is that there's a joggle oops, right there on the side of the core support that is not on the driver's side. It is flat top to bottom. This one has a joggle on it and it comes down you can see it kick back. So what I did is I made a relief cut um, so that the, the metal had a place to go. I cut the corner and then I came back just a little bit and cut out some material and then bent it back so you can just see it's it's not exactly the same as that shape uh, but it's close enough that it's going to weld up and be much nicer and have a minimal gap as compared to having a big gap so let me get this core support set in place and get it welded in All right, so everything is welded in in the front, the core support, the aprons, and as I mentioned, I'm going to work on getting this uh, lower half of the torque box in place. And so far, it's been a little bit of a challenge. Um, these usually are, they're not that easy to work with, and I, it makes it easier to split them in two instead of just trying to do an assembly, which I had to anyway. Um, but I'll point out that the upper half, this should not be below this uh, floor support. This should be, at least that edge should be even with that. So my fix for that is gonna be, I'm gonna cut this and I will move this up and re-weld it so that it's in line, or at least that corner is in line with the bottom of the uh, floor support. Secondly, if you'll look at the uh, two that I have here, this is the, the uh, passenger side and I've trimmed out this corner because it was it basically ran all the way down into that area right there so it created a where that triangle is basically that was there before so I trimmed that off um, that's the only piece I had to trim now compare that to the driver's side and it already has a, a bird mouth or cut out in place there so I just want to show you that as a reference the um, the fitment, now that I've um, cut out that little corner, is pretty good. It'll, it'll go up, and it looks pretty decent. Um, once I get this, there you go, this edge needs to go a little bit higher, and this corner needs to go up. And of course it can't go up because of the uh, other piece being in the wrong position. So once I fix that, this will bend up. Um, beyond that, I just have to drill holes here so it matches to the frame rail. And of course some holes at the front here and there's holes on this edge. And then there are a few more you know, different locations. But I just want to show you how that's fitting. And It'll be fine when I'm done with it. It just, you know, takes some massaging to make some of these pieces fit. All right, so I've done the cut on this flange and raised it up. I used my plasma cutter and I cut out just a little strip of metal and then welded it up in place. You can see it's flush here at the bottom now. Uh, I did want to point out on the uh, floor support it has a kick out little flange on the top here and I had to trim the face of that off because the interaction was too it would make it stick over uh, with the lower uh, lower half of the torque box so now um, 
as I've, as you can see, I've drilled up a series of holes, and the edge that goes against the frame rail of the original car, those were uh, welded on the edge of that. They weren't plug welded, so I'll, I'll replicate that. Everything else will be have have these plug welds. So I'll just show you a couple things. fits a whole lot better and put the clamp back here it fits the bottom of the frame rail really nice happy with that happy with the fitment here and I want to show you something here this little flange on the side um, hangs down you see it's a little bit low and it needs to go up. There's a little bit of a gap. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, sorry. There's a little bit of a gap above this space. There's a space between these two panels right now. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of help it into place. And I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, there you can kind of see. That part that's hanging down. Sometimes you can assist it with a, putting some vice grips on. And I say assist. I'm putting pressure on it. And then I can tap up. And those vice grips will hold it in place. And I can just keep moving around with vice grips and get it much closer and of course that's what I'll do whenever I go to weld it so that it holds that flange where it's supposed to be nice and flush so beyond that I will prep uh, everything on the back side of that, um, I'll paint the inside of this, paint the inside of the torque box, and of course we use a weld through primer. This area up here, we get it tap down just a little bit, and it'll snug into the original, or the uh, upper half of the torque box. And that should be it, so hopefully I can get all that finished up shortly. This is the passenger side torque box. And like I said, I prepped everything, painted the inside, and uh, it's fully welded in. I did do the edge weld where it meets the frame rail. It's all welded. Hope you can see that. I can't. There we go. Everything's welded at the bottom. So it should be good and solid. Guess you can see that. Now there's one more piece that needs to be added to this side. I haven't finished the other side yet, but I will. I'm just not going to film that. Uh, these little gussets here. This is a Dynacorn part. And you can see it's a torque box gusset. And it comes in a weld through, weld through primer. These are nice and thick. I believe they're 90 thousandths thick. I measured them. And these, of course, will go down here in that corner and add just a little more bracing. So that's the last step, and of course I'll, you know, drill some holes in those and weld them from the bottom, and drill a hole here and weld it in place. But uh, that'll be the last step in the front area of this uh, '66 Mustang. All right, so that'll be the end of part 12 for the Brooklyn Pony. Um, there's been a lot of stuff done on this front end and a lot of measuring and fitting and remeasuring and welding and grinding. Uh, it's a complicated process and I hope you, I gave you know enough information that you can feel comfortable doing something similar or at least helps you out with your project as well. Um, along with that you know if you if you like my videos by all means click the like button. Um, if you can, if you're, if you're a subscriber great. If you're not go ahead and subscribe to me as well and if you can share the videos. Um, as I've said before in some of my vlogs, 
these videos, well, my videos are being seen around the world and there's people hungry for information and I try to give as much information as I can and try to help out when I can and uh, you know people need this information so I ask you to share it and then uh, you know those little ads that play on the bottom well that helps me out too if you want you let that ad play a little while uh, that works for the, the YouTube metrics you know the more views or time watching or you know followers and all that sort of thing helps out with it with the YouTube metrics and helps me out as well so um, the next video in the series will be part 13 and that's going to involve installing the TCI suspension uh, kit that I have for this car uh, the TCI is, it was supplied to me by the owner the front and rear and so I, I showed a little bit of that in either this video or one of the previous videos and so I'll go through that process I'll follow their instructions and if there's something I can see to improve on like when I did uh, the mini tub project on the 68 Camaro um, you know Detroit Speed had their own information sheet and I did videos on that so uh, again I'll try to help or interpret you know to make it better so uh, that'll be part 13 and I think that's it so once again uh, thanks for coming along for the ride and thanks for watching